Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. England is one of the United States' most recognizable regions. Damn right it is. Uh, guys, I'm from New England, the most New England of New England states, Rhode Island. Probably Massachusetts. If New England was a state, the capital would probably be Boston. And it would be great. If New England was a country. Oh, is that a scallop? Is that lobster or scallop? Never heard of a scallop roll. Looks lobster. I'd prefer fries. Um, hi guys. Original link to the video, top of the description from What If Geography. I'm subbed. Uh, yeah. Hi, my name's Connor. I am from Rhode Island, which is in New England, which is in the U.S. And I like to learn about things. Let's go. Uh, very educated, very rich. We do have some good schools. Let's find out. What if New England was a country? Go. Girls, Harvard University, Duncan. New England is one of the United States' most recognizable regions. Home to lobster rolls, Harvard University, Dunkin' Donuts, many, 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 many lighthouses, few other regions in the United States can boast of such iconic symbols. But while New England is as American as apple pie, it's also a unique region with its own culture. So what if New England was a country instead? Don't make me upset, sir. Hello and welcome to What If Geography, where we try and answer the great geographic what if questions of the world. I'm your host, Jeff Gibson, and today we're off to New England, okay. one of the best and most culturally defined regions of the United States. New England is also responsible for some of the deepest American historical events, which kind of makes it hard to break New England away from the United States as a whole. But we're going to try anyways. I'm excited. New England was originally founded by Puritan settlers who immigrated from England to escape religious persecution. But prior to the call... Okay, guys, I'm getting rid of my biases okay let's let's learn i'm not from new england i'm from by puritan settlers who immigrated from england to escape religious persecution but prior to the colonization by puritans the area we typically associate with new england today was actually home and native lands of quite a few algonquin tribes Wampanoag. this is important to keep in mind because the early relationships between the puritans and these native american tribes comprise so much of the foundational history of the region today New England was first coined as the name for the region in 1620 by the pilgrims who settled Plymouth Colony in what we would call Massachusetts today. These pilgrims came aboard a well-known historic ship called the Mayflower. Mayflower. However, the colonists aboard the Mayflower almost immediately faced... Sorry, that's like the first thing you learn in school in terms of history. Mayflower. Known or I guess Columbus. Never mind. ...historic ship called the Mayflower. However, the colonists aboard the Mayflower almost immediately faced hurdles to their founding of a colony. You see, the pilgrims were not really given any authority to settle the area, and some of the passengers of the Mayflower began to question their right to land. In response to this, a group of colonists drafted and signed the first governing document of the colony, the Mayflower Compact, while still aboard the ship as it lay offshore. The intent of the compact was to establish a means of governing the colony, though it did little more than confirm that the colony would be governed like any English town. Now, the original colonies faced some hard first years in New England. Disease and inclement weather hampered much of the progress and scuppered almost all of their supplies. By the end of the first year, almost half of the original colonists had died. But this period also gave the United States we know today two of its most cherished American folktales. That being the Native American Squanto teaching the pilgrims how to grow corn, and then the very first ever Thanksgiving feast. Over the next 150 years, New England grew steadily, forming many more towns and even large cities such as Boston. This, of course, all grew steadily, forming many more more towns and even large cities such as Boston. This, of course, all came with many bloody conflicts and wars with the Native American tribes who were eventually wiped out. Ironically, the Puritans who faced religious persecution themselves often persecuted others for not following their very rigid beliefs. New England, and more specifically Boston, hold in their history right, two of the- For people who keep saying, because on the Discord it's a running joke and it's annoying because they don't get it, why is Prudence white? Um, Rhode Island, I'm 90% sure, is just- See this biggest one? That's a Quidnick Island. It has Newport on it, it has Middletown, it has um, Portsmouth. Um, and then you have Jamestown. Rigid belief. Uh, uh, then, you know, Narragansett down there. You have Providence up there, Bristol, Barrington, um, Warwick. 
but I, I believe it's when it says Rhode Island, this is the island it's talking about, a Quidnick Island. I'm very confident, but I'm not so confident that I'm like, oh, what if I'm technically a little... And then, so the full name of Rhode Island is Rhode Island and Providence Plantations. That's the full name of the state. And so it's like Rhode Island and then Providence Plantations. And now the whole thing is just referred to as Rhode Island, right? It's a shortened version of the name. And uh, then people get confused. It's not an island. So New England, and more specifically Boston, hold in their history two of the most important events in the run-up to the American Revolutionary War. The first being the Boston Massacre of 1770, where British soldiers opened fire on a civilian crowd. The second being the Boston Tea Party event that saw a group called the Sons of Liberty dump about 92,000 pounds of tea into the Boston Harbor. This event gave rise to the famous American saying of no taxation without representation. Without New England and these two events specifically, it's hard to imagine the United States ever existing at all. An entire video series could be devoted just to New England. There are so many foundational historic events in New England that Thinking we just of the don't gasping. have time to cover in this video. But make no mistake, the United States we know today would not exist without the New England of yesterday. Which kind of makes thinking- I just want to say, uh, the sinking of the Gaspy, which is a British ship going up the Narragansett River, or going up Narragansett Bay, which is the bay that you see around all the islands in Rhode Island. And it ran aground, and then we burnt it to the ground. Thinking about New England as its own country, challenging. But before we get into what New England would look like as its own country, if you're enjoying this video, now would be a great time to subscribe. More what if country videos are just one click away. I knew this was going to be annoying for people to watch. New I'm going England to be like, is comprised oh. of six states in the far northeast of the current United States. These states are Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont. New England today would be bordered by Quebec and New Brunswick in the north and northeast, and the state of New York to the west. Most notably, perhaps, is that New England would share a direct border with the New York City metropolitan area. Today, many of New England's largest concentrations of people commute daily into New York City. If New England were to break away and become its own country, there would no doubt be a need for a relatively easy cross-border control system. This wouldn't really be all that different from places like Johor and Singapore, where thousands of people cross an international border daily for work. Now, despite comprising six of the current 50 U.S. states, the actual area size of New England is relatively small. All six states combined currently take up about 72,000 square miles. I don't think it would even be an average size state, even if it was all one state. I think it might still be below average. I'm not sure. Square miles. To put this in perspective, that's about the same size as the state of Washington, and smaller than 19 other states. Okay, never mind. It, it would be in the uh, top. Okay. New England would, oddly, be fairly close to the same size as Great Britain, which is comprised of England, Scotland, and Wales, granted with about a quarter of the population. Speaking of population, New England would be home to just over 15 million people, with Massachusetts specifically being a home to over 7 million people. This would make Massachusetts the powerhouse state of New England. Oh, absolutely. Massachusetts would control everything. It, it, it is definitely the most powerful, you know, uh, of the states. In contrast to Massachusetts, Vermont would be the least populous state in New England with only about 650,000 people. Both of these states are almost exactly the same size as each other, but Massachusetts has a population density of 897 people per square mile as compared to Vermont's 68 people per square mile. Massachusetts population density is actually higher than some major metropolitan areas of the United States such as Dallas, Texas, which only has 880 people per square mile. This kind of population density is in part why New England can often feel more European than other areas of the US. In terms of diversity, New England would actually be overwhelmingly white at about 83.4% of the population. But while New England is not very racially diverse, it is very culturally diverse with many cultural Europeans living within the country. As of 2014, approximately 19.2% of the population identified culturally as Irish, 136 identified as Italian, 13.1% as French or French-Canadian, 7.4% German, 4.9% Polish, 3.2% Portuguese, I was going to say, where's Portuguese? And so on. In fact, culturally English people only make up about 12% of the population. In some ways, it almost makes more sense to rename New England to New Ireland, as it is by far the dominant culture outside of general American culture. 
Much of this cultural diversity stems from the early mid-1900s immigration of Europeans to the region. Between 1900 and 1915, more than 15 million people immigrated to the United States, and many of those to New England and Boston directly. We're going to say the New England. All right, this is where we're going to shine. We have Yale, Princeton, or no, Princeton's New Jersey. Shoot. Um, Yale, Harvard, Brown is definitely the best uh, university college in uh, Rhode Island. Um, is Dartmouth in northern New York, or is it in, New in Vermont? Where's Dart? Oh, he's going to say. New England remains as one of the best educated parts of the United States, and even in the world. In fact, New England is home to some of the oldest universities in the Western world, many of which are considered to be highly prestigious and desired by students. Harvard University, Yale University, Brown University, and Dartmouth College all exist within New England and make up fully half of the Ivy League schools. In addition, New England is home to MIT, the world-renowned science-focused right, university. MIT. This is all, of course, in addition to the hundreds of additional state and private universities that exist throughout the region. Much of this cultural dedication to education stems from the Puritans, because while the Puritans were not very tolerant of other religions and ideas, they also believed deeply in the institution of education. The Puritans mandated that every boy and girl had an education from a young age. This mandate has rippled throughout history and established the idea of being well-educated as a core part of what it means to be a New Englander today. I graduated uh, from Providence College. New England is comprised of- Honestly, I shouldn't have, uh, I'm surprised. Like if you told me at my high school, it'd be, it's not an amazing school, it's not a terrible school, it's kind of in the middle, right? And uh, I was not great in high school. I've never been a great student. I was. I always admire people who are really good students, not just for their smarts, but for their, like, your discipline. You can't just be smart to be a really good student. You have to be, like, like, like obviously, if you're intellectually gifted, then you're going to have an easier time in school. But it's also a lot of discipline stuff, right? And I always admire people who, are, who got, like, straight A's and were devastated when they got a B, whereas when I got a B, I was like, hell yeah. All right. Hundreds of cities and towns. But as a country, the Boston metropolitan area would absolutely dominate the economy and culture of New England. The Boston metropolitan area would have about one third of the total population of New England at about 4.9 million people. This would be far and away larger than the next largest metropolitan area of Providence, Rhode Island. Really? Which has about one oh my God. Okay. Okay. So this is my, uh, so I was born in a hospital I, this building right here is kind of blocking it. I think this building right here is vacant. Like, I think this building right here, no one's in it. But um, this bridge, I have passed over trillions of times. Um, where's the hospital? It's got to be behind this. But anyways, my, my birth town right here, everyone. 1.6 million people. This kind of population distribution would make Boston a primate city, where the largest city of the country is roughly twice as large in terms of population and overwhelmingly culturally dominant. This would also mean that Boston would, likely, serve as the capital of the country of New England. No question. Because there are no other major competing cities, establishing the federal government within the largest major metropolitan area makes a certain amount of sense. Outside of Boston... Boston, in all senses, I would say, is the center of New England. In Providence. Other major metropolitan areas within New England include Hartford, Connecticut, New Haven, Connecticut, Bridgeport, Connecticut, Manchester, New Hampshire, and Worcester, Massachusetts. Burlington, Vermont, and Portland, Maine. It's Worcester, but he said Worcester. That's fine. Maine, while not major population centers, do have a certain cultural relevance to the region as well. Worcester, okay? Not Worcester. While not major population centers, do have a certain cultural relevance to the region as well. Or is it Worcester? Now he's making me doubt myself. Am, am I the dummy? No, it's Worcester. Why am I questioning myself? Economically, New England is very powerful for its size. The combined GDP of New England would be $1.15 trillion, making it the 18th wealthiest nation in the world by GDP. This would place New England just above the Netherlands and just below Saudi Arabia. This is in part because of the biotech and pharmaceutical industry in Boston, mm -hmm. where there are currently over 1,000 companies located. In addition to this, New England is home to General Electric, Converse, Reebok, 
New Balance, Fidelity Investments, and many more large companies. Overall, New England enjoys one of the highest GDP per capita in the world at $77,000. This would place it eighth according to the United Nations, well above the USA's current $63,000 per capita. No matter how you cut it, New England would be a dominant economic power in the world, easily sitting amongst many European and Eastern Asian countries today. Nice. New England would make for a well-defined, economically powerful, and culturally diverse country. However, its history and its roots tie it to the United States in a way that few other regions can claim. Because of this, I know it's not part of New England, but imagine you just kind of added New York to it. Then you'd have New York City. Uh, I mean, it'd be like twice as powerful amongst many European and powerful and culturally diverse country. However, its history and its roots tie it to the United States in a way that few other regions can claim. Because of this, it's hard to imagine New England as a country without the complete dissolution of the United States as a whole. After all, New England led the charge during the American Civil War to keep the Union together. You don't just break away and form your own country after that. I hope you enjoyed today's episode on New England as its own country. If you did, you can subscribe to my channel right here. And if you want to watch more of my What If Geography videos, you can do so here. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you for making. See you next time. Uh, great channel, What If Geography. It's probably a bit annoying, but how do you expect me not to be in a New England video? I love New England, all right? Grew up here my entire life, in Rhode Island my entire life. And the majority of my, you know, summer and you know summer whether it be like camping in the summer or or hiking in the summer or skiing in the winter have all been up to vermont new hampshire maine and so just so much of my life experience has been in new england um if not just all except for three years in college new york and a bit of you know vacations and stuff but i love it here it's probably not everyone's cup of tea if you will but uh, it was a really nice video all right. Hope you guys are doing well. If not, don't worry. Emotions are fickle, my friend, and you will be soon. And uh, sorry, again, sorry if I was a bit annoying, but uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.